What's up guys, it's your girl Frumpy Fit and if you don't know who I am, I'm an online weight loss coach who's dedicated to calling out all the BS in the fitness industry and providing you with accurate fitness, nutrition, and weight loss information. Today we're talking about body types. They're technically called somatotypes. There are three, ectomorph, mesomorph, and endomorph. I first heard about these body types back in 2012 when I was first getting into fitness. I learned about them from a YouTuber and lots of fitness professionals still use them today even though they're actually completely bogus. They make sense when you first hear about them. Being able to classify yourself into a specific category that validates all the frustrations that you have about fitness. Like it makes sense that the reason you can't get a certain result is because you were born with a certain body type that has these issues. And fitness professionals love using them because it's an opportunity for them to claim that there's some sort of secret that you don't understand and that's why you're not getting the results you're looking for. An ectomorph is somebody who is naturally very thin, has a fast metabolism, has trouble gaining weight and loses weight very easily. A mesomorph is in the middle. They're typically an athletic body type. They can gain weight and lose weight very easily, basically the dream body type. We all feel like we know somebody who's like that. And then endomorph is the last one. It's somebody who is typically naturally bigger, has a higher body fat percentage, it gains weight very easily, and it's hard for them to lose weight. And I know you're probably putting yourself into one of those categories. I classified myself into one of those categories when I first heard about them, and to me it made so much sense. And then I actually did the research on them, and what I'm about to tell you about these body types is going to absolutely blow your mind. I'm going to put all the links to my research in the description box. I promise I am not making this up. So in the 1940s, there was a guy named William H. Sheldon. He's a psychologist. And at that time, there was a posture study being done on Ivy League undergrad students. So these Ivy League undergrads consented to having photos taken of their body in order for this posture study to be conducted. They put pins, like little markers, along their spine and other places on their body in order for their posture to be analyzed. And what William H. Sheldon decided was that he wanted to use these photos for his own research because he had a theory that body type was an indicator of morality, of temperament, of behavior, of personality, and he wanted to do this research. So without their consent, he took these naked photos of undergrad students for his own purposes. And it's a big scandal on its own that, that these photos even exist. And supposedly they include some pretty prominent people in the US because remember, this is Ivy League schools in the 1940s. So there had to have been some really important people come out of these schools who probably were included in this study. In one of the sources that I was reading about these naked Ivy League photos and the scandal around it, people eventually realized that that was pretty so they gave these photos, I guess because they were a part of history, to the Smithsonian and eventually it was decided that the photos were going to be destroyed. So most of the photos were destroyed between 1995 and 2001. So that's how this guy William Sheldon conducted his research and that's how he created th the three different body types. Remember from the beginning, ectomorph, mesomorph, and endomorph. And if you remember, ecto is skinny, Meso is in the middle or athletic and endo is a higher body fat percentage. So how did he come up with those names? He named these body types after the three germ layers of embryonic development. Okay, so ecto, remember ecto means someone who's skinny. Ectoderm is the development of skin and the nervous system. Skin, skinny. The mesoderm is the development of muscle, heart, and blood vessels. Muscle, muscular, athletic, seeing a pattern here. And the endoderm is the development of the digestive system. Digestive system as in eating, as in a higher body fat percentage, right? So as we're jumping into this research, it's kind of starting to make some sense. And if you remember, this study wasn't to classify differences in exercise and diet. It was to classify differences using body type in personality, moral character, behavior, etc. So what he did was he assigned certain characteristics to each body type. If you're an ectomorph, you are classified as being intelligent, gentle, and calm, but also anxious and introverted. 
if you were classified as a mesomorph, that meant that you were competitive, extroverted, and tough. And later, when these theories were applied to criminology, it was suggested that criminals tend to be mesomorphic. And last, if you were classified as an endomorph, that meant that you were happy, laid back, and outgoing, but that you were also lazy and selfish. But let's talk more about this Sheldon guy. So he got a lot of different degrees from a lot of different places. He did get a MD. He did become a medical doctor from the University of Chicago in 1933. But his specialty, the thing that he focused his entire career on was psychology. He also was a numismatist, which is like a coin collector person, coin scientist. He was a specialist in United States sense, but after his death, he was actually accused of substituting lower grade examples of coins with the higher ones. Basically, he was stealing the higher grade examples of certain coins from the American numismatic society. And while coins and coin theft have nothing to do with body types, it just kind of speaks to who this guy was and in my eyes is an indicator that we probably shouldn't listen to anything that he did or said. But let's go back to the body types or the somatotypes. During the 1940s when all this was going on and Sheldon was conducting his research, he was trying to develop a theory called constitutional psychology. The foundation of the ideas behind constitutional psychology originated from this guy called Francis Galton and eugenics. Eugenics is basically what the Nazis used to justify genocide. It's claiming that a certain race or certain characteristics of a person is superior to others. And so where all of this was going is that your body type determined your moral worth. And people really believed this stuff at the time until, of course, the whole Nazi situation happened. Everyone was like, we should not have gone there. That was bad. Like, that, let's not make this a thing. Even Life magazine put out an issue on, I think, June 20th of 1951, completely outlining all of Sheldon's findings on this constitutional psychology or the relation of body type to personality, moral behavior traits. And now all of this stuff is why I don't trust fitness professionals who use these terms. Even if they're not using them as William H. Sheldon intended them to be used, it just doesn't make sense. They weren't created for exercise or diet, so why are you using them for that? And if you actually did research and you realized how controversial the creation of these were, why would you use them at all? So to me, that's an indication that a fitness professional isn't doing their research. and someone who isn't doing their research should not be trusted. Each fitness professional is responsible for providing information that is accurate and is actually going to help their clients or their audience. Like it blows my mind that there are still people today using these terms. And just to, for a little spice and pizzazz, I'm gonna include a montage of some fitness professionals who are still using these terms today. It's called somatypes, introduced to the public by Dr. William H. Sheldon, who I think it's safe to say that he was pretty smart. Three main somatotypes. Three different body types out there. Ectomorphs. The mesomorphs. And lastly, the endomorphs. You gotta figure out which body type are you. Possibly the most important thing that you need to first take into account. Each one of these body types require different strategies. Calculated approach that has been proven by science to work. How, wait, first of all, you're not gonna speed past that like you didn't just say what you just said. Now, I'm not saying that people don't fall into these categories in a sense. Each of these categories represent someone's body type as it is currently and what things they're struggling with on their fitness journey. And obviously, based on your struggles, your diet and your training should be different. If you have trouble gaining weight, your exercise and diet strategy is going to look different than someone who has a hard time losing weight. But it's not as secretive or as serious as the people who use these body types claim that it is. You don't need a specific macro split or type of workout or type of cardio or whatever it is they're claiming in order to mitigate the struggles that you're having. So after all of that, here's what you really need to know. And this is the only thing that matters on your fitness journey. Everyone who loses weight did so by a calorie deficit. 
period. There are no exceptions to that rule except for like liposuction or surgery. Everyone who gains weight did so by a calorie surplus, eating more calories than they burned, period. There are no exceptions. Everyone whose weight stays the same is at an energy balance that is neutral. They're burning the same amount of calories that they're eating every day, period. There are no exceptions to this. These rules do not change no matter what body type you are. So stop letting fitness professionals claim that there's some sort of secret because there isn't. All right, that's the end of the video. If you wanna check out any of the sources that I used for my research, you can check the description box. Yes, I did use Wikipedia, but Wikipedia cites their sources. So I did check out all the sources that the Wikipedia articles were linking. As usual guys, thank you so much for watching. Feel free to subscribe, like, share, follow me on Instagram and follow me on TikTok. I've gained about 30,000 TikTok followers over the last less than a month. So feel free to follow me there. It's a really fun time. And I will see you guys in next week's video. Okay, bye.